Hi, my name is Christy. Welcome back to my channel. So it's been a while since I've had a struggle project. Here's one for you. I decided to make a skirt and then I remembered skirts look terrible on me. I don't know why I picked a skirt. I don't know why I thought this would be different. And I just came back from vacation where I ate a lot. I brought back that food in places that I really didn't want that food to come back with me. And I decided to do it for measurements. I don't know why. That's not the way I typically do projects, but I figured I, I was gonna try measurements, my terrifying vacation weight measurements. Yeah, that didn't work out either. I transitioned it into a dress. That was not a smooth transition. If you are feeling like you are struggling in your sewing project, this is the video for you. It turned out good in the end. So keep at it. Just keep going. Seam rip every seam. I think that's what I did. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. Hit that bell for notifications. If you're ready, I guess I'm ready. I'm so excited. Thanks so much for being here and enjoy. I just got back from vacation and look at my face. I am so not excited to take my measurements. Even my dress form was mocking me. Why was it so much taller than me? There we go, that's better. Back to taking my wow, I ate too much on vacation hip measurements. And then also my waist measurement right at the belly button, as well as the skirt length from my belly button to below my knee. After writing down those horrific measurements, I'm going to make a pattern using wrapping paper. And apparently I'm a hoarder of wrapping paper scraps, so I'll just roll those back in to use next Christmas. Oh, and I also forgot to get the measurement from my belly button to the widest part of my vacation hips. So I don't really wanna to spend too much time explaining this because it didn't work for me. And I'm not sure what I did wrong, but I'll link the video in my description box in case you're curious. In theory, it sounds like it should work. So I think I just did it wrong, which was mistake number one of many. Stay tuned, you'll see. I got this really cool four-way stretchy snakeskin print fabric from my most recent mystery scrap fabric box that I'm going to use for this skirt. I cut out the skirt pieces from the pattern and I should have known that this wasn't going to work because I already noticed that they look too big, but I figured it was just vacation weight. I also made a waistband by folding over the fabric in half and lining up the top curve of the skirt. I measured down three and a half inches from that curve to cut it out. For some extra stability, I have also cut out matching pieces of iron-on interfacing. To make the slit, line up the front skirt pieces with right sides together. Pin down to where... Ross... Roscoe... Can you at least show your face? No? Okay. I'll smooth that back out and then, like I was saying, pin down to where you would like the slit to start. I am sewing with a generous half inch seam allowance using a straight stitch rather than a zigzag stitch to achieve a stylized look for the slit. So with that generous seam allowance, fold over a quarter of an inch twice to hide the raw edges and then pin to sew along that outside edge. As a rule, you want to use a zigzag stitch with stretchy material. However, the straight stitch was working out really well for me on this one for some reason. The zigzag stitch, not so much. Just do a couple of tests on whatever fabric you are working with because I think this actually turned out really cool looking and it finishes off the slit very nicely. To attach the skirt back, line up the pieces with right sides together and pin, leaving room for a zipper on one side. Keep watching for many mistakes to come from that. Since this fabric is thin, it kept getting sucked into my sewing machine. So I've added a small piece of tissue paper to get it started at the beginning and then also again at the end, which would have worked great had my bobbin thread not run out. When it does work, it is real easy to just tear away the tissue paper and any pieces. I tried on the skirt and it is way too big, which is good because it doesn't mean I gained all that much weight from vacation, but it's also kind of annoying because now I need to size it down. I've added pins where I need to take it in and blend it into the side seam. And since I took in the top of the skirt, I also need to size down the waistband and the interfacing pieces. 
line up the rough side of the interfacing to the wrong side of the fabric and hold the iron in place for about 5 to 10 seconds in each spot. Next, join the two waistband pieces together by lining them up and sewing along one edge. Iron it flat and this is what it should look like. Before attaching the waistband, I finished off the raw edge on my serger since I was fairly confident that it was fitting me better. Line up the bottom of the waistband with the top of the skirt, pin and sew with a straight stitch. Now that the waistband is attached, push all of the seams towards the waistband side and sew along that edge to encourage the waistband to lay flat. When you flip it around to the other side, it should lay flat and give a nice professional finished look to the top of the skirt. For the other end of the waistband, I am choosing to serge that side and then fold it over once to sew along that edge. Or if you don't have a serger, you can just fold it over twice and sew it with a straight stitch. Make sure the waistband does not shift around, use the stitch in the ditch method, which just means top stitching in the middle of the existing seam line. Do this to the side seam and the seam at the top of the slit. Ugh, the zipper. Okay, you can probably already tell that, yep, I am, I am doing this on the wrong side. I mean, technically I did it right by sewing a basting stitch and then lining up the zipper teeth with that basting stitch, but it's done on the wrong side of the fabric, so it doesn't count. This is mistake number two. I'm so proud to switch out the regular presser foot for the zipper foot and then sew really close and here I am ripping it out because I did it wrong. So here is the right way. Since the waistband is finished, I've lined up the top of the zipper to the top of the skirt, then sewed a temporary basting stitch along the correct side of the fabric lined up the zipper teeth to that basting stitch, pinned it in place, and then here I am double checking before sewing to make sure it'll actually close the right way. For the other side of the zipper, it's hard to see here because it's red on red, but flip the zipper so that the teeth are facing to the right and line it up again with a basting stitched guideline. Pin in place and then double check again and make sure it actually zips up before sewing. Finally got it right, sewed it in place, and it zips up. And then it is right about here that I tried it on and remembered that skirts look terrible on me and I don't know why I thought this one would be different. So I decided to make it into a dress because I really like this fabric and I didn't want it to go to waste. So I'm doing what I should have done the entire time and patterned from clothes that I already know fit. So I made the top piece here and the back piece the same way, just chalking around the edges, adding a seam allowance, cutting it out. So simple. I don't know why I'm trying anything different. I'm going to attempt to keep the waistband for the dress, but still need to take the skirt in even more to line it up with the top part. I've marked the new sewing line with pins, and after I've sewn that and tried it on again, I can safely cut away the excess. At this point, I'm still wanting to add the zipper to the dress, so I am only attaching the back piece to the front piece on one side. Line it up with right sides together and sew along the one edge. And then finish off that edge with a serger or a zigzag stitch. Flip down the top part so that the right sides are facing together and then line up and pin the side seam first. Next, find the middle of the top and mark it with a pin. And then find the middle of the skirt. Then match those two pins together and do the same for the back. Add as many pins as you want and sew around the edge. Here comes the next frustrating trial. As I was trying to attach the pieces together, the fabric kept slipping and stretching and irritating me. When I got to the seam, there was too much fabric on top and it made this awful pucker, so I had to seam rip it out and decided to sew the front and the back individually, starting at the seam each time. This way, if it stretched a little, it didn't matter too much because the seam was already lined up. Here I am attaching the zipper down the side of the dress. Again, this project gave me lots of practice with zippers. But this time, because the top was not finished, I measured down half an inch and also made marks on the zipper at the waistline and the bottom to make sure everything lined up correctly. Now that the zipper is complete, again, I am seam ripping out the basting stitches. I did some experiments to see which way would make the top lay flat and not be wavy. 
I found the best way was to first zigzag stitch a thin piece of elastic around the top and then fold that over again and then sew with another zigzag stitch. And my machine was having none of the zigzag stitches. I don't know why, but it kept messing up. See how it's dropping a stitch every once in a while? So for the first time, I cleaned my sewing machine and that's what was inside. Gross. But it did start cooperating and did a nice zigzag stitch for me. So before folding it down to stitch the top again, I am adding a cute tag that my family made for me. I love these and I keep forgetting to put them in my projects. There was so much sighing in this project. So I tried it on again and the top is droopy. It doesn't fit because it's stretchy fabric and I didn't take that into account. So my first thought was to seam rip that all out, which is why it's undone on the right side. Thought against it and decided to use clips to mark how much I needed to take it in by adding princess seams, which is just the seam that runs down the center of the bust. To make for easier sewing, I first replaced the clips with pins. Okay, so finally it's fitting better, and then I realized because the waistband wasn't laying flat, it was like whack-a-mole. It kept popping up whenever you touched it, so I had to seam rip all of that out too. And since I put this darn zipper in three times, I'm going to try to keep it in. Here's how much I'm looking forward to more seam ripping. After a lot of quality time with my seam ripper, I finally removed the waistband. Still trying to keep the zipper intact, I am hoping that the top and the bottom line up correctly. And here's how well that went. This honestly would have been a very simple project had I just made it a dress from the start. But here I am lining up the side seam again and then pinning the top to the skirt. Again! Starting each time at the side seam, sew the front and the back individually, just like we did before, and this time I'm using a zigzag stitch to maintain the stretch. And since it's stretchy, we don't need the zipper anymore. So I'm just gonna close up the side seam and cut away the excess fabric. Oh, and this is fun. I tried to make straps and they turned out terrible too. I had a vision of them looking all elegant and nope, they didn't lay flat. The elastic didn't work. I tried to seam rip it out and make them skinnier, but decided to just bag it all because I was over this project and the dress already looked good strapless. I did end up doing one more decorative touch by continuing the double seam from the slit to the bodice. The hem. I attempted to fold over the bottom twice and sew with a zigzag stitch and once again it kept dropping stitches. So after dissolving into a puddle of tears, I ripped it out and just did a straight stitch because that was working well with this fabric. To reduce bulk, clip the seam and fold the seam allowance in different directions. I hope you enjoy this final reveal featuring swanky music and me losing against nature. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and please like this video to help me feel better about myself. Look at me trying to be all sophisticated in my backyard and a sweet slow-mo walk up to the camera to check my hair and look there's a giant bug on my chin giant bug on my chin and i got bitten and my chin itches i am so not a model i give models lots of credit oh there's a tree there's a tree good recovery saying here? Oh yeah, the tree is not comfortable. And my chin itches. Look at my back! That's from the tree! I'm thinking that maybe hanging off the tree is going to be a little more comfortable. Or maybe just posing in front of the tree. A nice slow back up, except I landed in the tree. And then an ant was crawling on my hand. Everything's itching. Even my dog wants to get out of there. I tried to gracefully move the branch out of the way and ended up breaking it. Oh, this seems like a good idea. Why did I 
Did I think this was a good idea? Okay, solid ground, that's better. Yikes. Bikes. I can never find that tree. Nope, my hand's still not on it. So all in all, I am very happy with the way this dress turned out, even if it was a pain to sew and model. Make it a great day as I stumble trying to walk on grass in heels.